Hello everyone, have you been enjoying your daily game of Wordle? Today we are going to explore the creation of a Wordle clone. My name is Rui Barbosa and I'm a developer advocate at OutSystems. For those unfamiliar with Wordle, Wordle is a word game, a guessing game. There's a secret word every day. It's the same word for everyone. You have six attempts to solve that word. And with every guess, you get some feedback on how well you are doing. So for example, this one, it's telling me there's an A in this exact position and none of these letters, T, R, C, E, are used. So let's try eagle, for example. Of course, I shouldn't be using letters that I'm sure they're not going to be there, but this is the other feedback that you get. There's an A somewhere else, not in this position. There's an G somewhere and there's an L somewhere else. To me, it's pretty interesting that roughly 5,000 years after the invention of writing, mankind still likes to play with words. And Josh Wardle, the author of this game, really created something very, very interesting, which presents a really nice mind challenge. So what would it take to create the Wordle game in using the OutSystems platform? Let's take a look. Let's open our new Wordle application. And as you can see, it is composed of two parts. The new Wordle service, which is the game engine by itself, and the new Wordle, which has the UI. Looking at the new Wordle service, you'll see that the most important thing are these two service actions. One of them, new Wordle session, it will handle the creation of the new sessions, the game flow, did you lose the game, are you continuing a game, and so on and the new world guess that will just process the guesses. So as you submit each word, it will figure out the positions and the colors and the status of each letter. The UI, it's very straightforward also. It has a single homepage with uh, two main areas, the area for the guesses to process the guesses and the area to display the keyboard. Together with these two areas, there are a couple of blocks to encapsulate the functionality. The guess block is each one of those sections that we saw, and it also has this tile over here to process each one of the letters. There is also a web block for the keys itself. So going back here, you have this block with each tile inside, and then you have one block for each one of the keys that are representing this virtual keyboard. Let's take a deeper look into the game engine itself. And let's start with the database. The database is fairly straightforward. We have a word list. This is the complete list of words. And this only exists to check if the word that is submitted is valid. Then you have your daily challenge. Every day there's a word randomly selected to be the challenge of the day. And then you have your sessions. Every user automatically gets assigned a session. That session is stored on the browser and it will be used the next time the user tries to play or if the user continues a game that he left around. Then we have this guess entity and this guess entity simply has each one of the guesses that the user is trying and also the status of each letter. Is it wrong? Is it in the right position? Does it exist somewhere else? Together with this, we have a couple of static entities, which is the status of the letter and the status of the session. I can show it over here. The status of each letter is absent, correct, empty, present, and to be determined. And the status of the session is lost, running, stale, and end one. Now let's take a look at the logic. So on the logic, as I was saying, you have this new Wordle session. It simply checks to see if the session already exists, if it needs to create a new one, and so on and so forth. It does a game eval, meaning is the game still running? Is it lost? Is it won? Should I fetch a new challenge for this user? Then you have like the last guess status that this will repaint the several guesses that the user tried to do, and then returns all this information back to the client. On the other hand, the guess itself is just a call to the guess method in order to process each one of the words submitted and figure out if the letters are in the correct position, if they exist somewhere, or if they are incorrect at all. Let's take a look at the guess itself. 
And how does the guest work? Well, it always does this session check just to see if there is no one trying to brute force the session and verifying if the user already has a session. It checks to see if the guest has a valid word, a word from that big table with the word list. And only if it is a valid word does it actually do a guess. This is part of the rules of Wordle where an invalid word does not count as a failed guess. Once you do a guess, you do the game evaluation, see if the game was lost, won, and so on and so forth. Picks up the history of this particular game with all the words that have been tried so far and returns all the information back to the client. If we take a look at the guess new, this is where the magic happens and it's where we figure out if the letter is in the right position, if there are more letters that have been found later, is it in the wrong position or it's not even used. The game evaluation handles the logic behind is the game won, is the game lost and so on and so forth. Looking into the session itself, let's take a look at the session check. So this is just to figure out if the user is a new user, is it a returning user? Do I recognize the session as something that I've given out before? And it also understands if it needs to fetch a new challenge for this day. So has the user finished playing and needs a new challenge and so on and so forth. Moving on to the UI bit. So what's interesting about this single page is that first, it's only using the layout base, so it's not using the traditional OutSystems layout. This is a very simple layout that allows us a lot more control over the design of the application, which is suitable for this simple one-page application. And I did explicitly use Flex which is something that I usually don't do. I rather rely on uh, the OutSystems pre-built components. A different take on how these demos can be created. Another interesting take is the way the styles are applied. So for example, if we open this block over here, we can see it has a couple of containers. Traditionally, we would create dynamic styling using something like this with a more or less complex expression where, depending on certain conditions, you would change dynamically the style classes that are being applied to the element. However, there's an interesting take in here, which is the usage of attributes in order to dynamically trigger different CSS classes. So for example, here on the tile, I've got two attributes, data state and data animation. They are both dependent on uh, variables. And when these variables are triggered, then the CSS interprets the value of those variables and will apply the style class to the element. Let's take a look at the CSS, for example. So we have here the tile, which is this one that we are looking here. And as you can see, under the data state, you have here a class specific if the data state equals empty. If this variable turns out to be this value, empty, it will apply this style if it is TBD, if it is correct, if it is present, if it is absent, and so on and so forth. The other one, this data animation, I have the class tile, if the data animation is pop, then it triggers this particular data animation. And here is the definition of the data animation. The same goes for flip and so on and so forth. Let's get back to our game and finish it. Let's try, for example, glass. See if that works. Okay, I got three right. Uh, what could it be? Hmm, let's try gland. So GLA. N, D, Let's see if that works. And we got it. So a lot more could be done with this game. This particular version doesn't have any settings, you know, dark mode, light mode, difficulty settings, and so on and so forth. It also does not keep track of the um, scoring, it doesn't keep track of your history, and it doesn't allow you to easily share in how many tries have you done a specific challenge without revealing the current word. A lot of things can be done to this game. A lot of new features can be added to this game. Maybe create a game that will support any length of words. So you could have a game for five letter words, six letter words, and so on and so forth. Maybe multi-language. So words in Spanish, in Portuguese, in German, or something like that. 
or maybe even a game to introduce another concept of how common certain words are, being able to adjust the difficulty level based on commonality of the words in certain languages. On a completely different path, we could actually create some bots to solve Wordle. If you are interested in this type of thing, check the links in the description below. There's a couple of videos from this person who is creating bots to solve Wordle using information theory. Fascinating stuff. So this version of the game, this clone, is available on the Forge for you. Feel free to join the team if you would like to extend this current version or, you know, just tinker with it on your own. For more details, check the description below. So folks, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and please do consider subscribing the channel. Have fun playing with new Wordle. Cheers everyone and go build those apps.